Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll take a look at vector graphics. Specific topics we'll focus on include the sub-object versus object level editing, points and paths, and the stroke and fill. Now, before we get into vector graphics, I'd like to review raster graphics quickly. If you remember from our lectures, raster graphics are basically a grid of pixels. And I find students really like working with raster graphics because there's only one way to edit a raster graphic, and that's to select the pixel or pixels you want to change, apply some kind of an edit, and you immediately see that change in your image. When it comes to vector graphics, there are two ways that you can edit them, and that's the object and sub-object levels. And understanding the difference between the two is critical to mastering vector graphics. So the way I like to explain the difference is using a house. On the left you can see a house that's being built. Now we don't aesthetically know what this house is going to look like yet, but we know what the structure of it is. We know what the blueprint is. Um, and so that's the sub-object level for a vector shape. It lets us know what the structure of the shape is going to be. On the right side you can see the object level. At this point the wooden framing has had the siding put on, it has shingles put on, it has trim put on, it's been painted. It's the aesthetic of the shape. So for a house, on the left side, that's the sub-object level. On the right side, it's the object level. Now before we start looking at vector shapes, I want to make sure we're all using the same vocabulary to talk about vector shapes. So when we're working at the sub-object level, we're talking about points and paths. All the points and paths combined that create our shape is called the pathway. At the object level, the stroke, which is the outline, and the fill for the shape are often referred to together as the shape itself. So let's go to Flash and take a look at some vector shapes. Now I know Flash has been updated to animate, but I haven't updated my software yet. I'm going to be using several tools here. I'm not going to get into the specifics of how the tools work in this video. I have several other videos on how to use these tools. Uh, in this video, I'm focusing exclusively on the vector shapes themselves and understanding them in more detail. So I'm going to create a simple shape here. All right, and I'm going to copy this shape. And I'm going to duplicate it in a second layer. So I'm going to copy this, make a new layer paste it in here, and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. So in my first layer, I'm going to switch over to what's called outline mode. Sometimes this is referred to as wireframe mode or uh, the sub-object mode, but in Flash they've been calling it outline, so that's what I'm going to call it. So I'll click on that, and I'm also going to use the sub-object selection tool to select that shape. All right, so here you can see on the left side the points in the four corners and the paths between those four points make up the blueprint of our shape or the structure of our shape just like the wooden structure of that house defined its shape. Here on the right side I'm going to use the selection tool you can see the stroke the black outline and the fill that yellowish orange and I can change either one of them to whatever colors I like. All right, so this is working at the object level. You'll notice that working at the object level only changes the aesthetics of it. It doesn't change the structure. If I switch back to the sub selection tool, I can now work with the points and change them. So I'm actually manipulating the shape of the object, but you'll notice when I leave outline mode, the aesthetics didn't change because I was not working at the object level on this shape. I was working at the sub-object level. So sub-object is for manipulating the shape or the structure. The object level is for manipulating the aesthetic of the shape. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.